Games like Dungeons and Dragons are more popular than ever. But with tons of rules, mountains of books, and so many dice, it can be hard to know where to get started. That's where Dungeoneering with Jason comes in. We're Dungeon Masters for Hire. Take a break and let us run your next game. One-on-one -on -one tutorials are also available for new DMs. Contact Dungeoneering with Jason today. Adventure is just a click away. Hi Gary, it's Quentin. Nose bomb. From the law firm that we both work at? Yeah, yeah, it's fell inside the game. Right, look, I'm trying to get a hold of the senior partners, but their extension ain't working. What do you mean I can't just call them anymore? I have to commune with the gods now? What does that even mean? I have to sacrifice a... Gary, what's a kobold? Look, I, I ain't got time to be doing that. All right, look, just relay a message for me, would you? All right, so last time we was fighting uh, these dwarves and a giant. I used some of my magic talking powers to make the dwarves give up. And then this girl, Laura used some of her magic grabbing powers. She yanked this magic helmet off of this giant's head. And then that fellow Jason made his chest explode. And he was dancing around in the organs and stuff, I know. And then that fellow Merle got knocked into the lake, realized that his armor was like Iron Man, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. armor, whatever, and he was walking around underwater like he was God dang Jack Cousteau. Then we get back and Jason decides, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fire this magic shotgun and this dragon bullet into the lake to blow up this octopus. Yeah, there was an octopus. He did that. It completely decimated the entire lake bed. We spent the next three hours dragging bits of metal uh, and calamari out. And then before saving our progress on this magic rock. Yeah, I don't know either. All right. I'm sorry for yelling. I'm sorry. Say hi to your mama for me. Welcome to Crumpets and Kerosene, an actual play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons game. I am your host and Dungeon Master Kelly, and I play most of the NPCs, not all of them. And around our table, we got some amazing folks, so we're going to start with Brent. What is your favorite, who is your favorite actor? Just actor, male? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, actor, actress... Uh, performer. Uh, performer. There it is. Person. Oh, performers are completely different thing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Who's your favorite movie when do we star? clap? Do we be clapping yet? Movie star. <laughs> Who's your favorite uh, movie star? I would say right now it's uh, either Ryan Reynolds or Scarlett Johansson, which is funny because they were married once and they don't want to work together. I mean, yeah. what, could you imagine those two together in a movie? Oh. Anyway. Right on. Uh, you can see the pictures if you're a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh? Well, what about your character? What about Jason? What's who's this? Uh, oh, Jason. He's probably oh, The Rock. The Rock. Mm. Gridiron or yeah, Jason right. Statham, maybe. Oh yeah, there you go. Huh. I thought it was Rudy, but all right, cool, cool. <laughs> he's a little he's a little young for that oh yeah fair enough that explains a lot all right what about you uh jenna um so um favorite actress for yeah okay so um i honestly didn't think about what jenna would like uh <laughs> <laughs> Some yoga instructor. Who the cares one who, about uh, that person? Yeah, no one cares about what Jenna likes. Uh, I'm going to go with... Fuck, I really can't think of anybody. I like Scarlett Johansson a lot um, as yeah, well. Yeah, she's good. She's pretty legit. Um, yeah. The mayor's story. So good in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She Jojo Rabbit? 
<laughs> Jojo Rabbit. Is cool. <laughs> oh, I haven't yet. I can't find a platform it's on. It's yeah. on. Uh, it's on HBO Max right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have HBO. So I'm just going to say Scarlett Johansson because I think that she's very versatile and she's also gorgeous and yeah, she, she's awesome. Um, Serene's favorite actor is Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. You do, all right. But, uh, if, you, if Serene was to be uh, transfer, transformed into a male, it would be Matthew McConaughey. I could see yes, that. Yes, 100% <laughs> yes. That's that could it. happen. <laughs> That's not just doing idea. Lexus commercials in the middle of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> know what I like about yoga instructors? <laughs> I get older, they stay the same age. Oh, yep. God. <laughs> so, Jason, uh, what about you? Uh, favorite actor, uh, Harrison Ford. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a since, good one. Since, my, since my little days. Uh, and I just like that he just gets grumpier and grumpier the older he gets. Yeah. Um, I I I, <laughs> I relate. Um, it's the Clint Quentin's Eastwood favorite French. actor. Oh boy. Um, Quentin loves Sally Fields. Uh, yep. And no. He will always love Sally Fields. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, what about you, Allie? Hi, my name is Allison. I play Sophia, and Sophia's favorite actor is Tim Curry. All right, Lee. What about you? <laughs> Uh well. <laughs> so what about me? So what about I, me? I mean, what about I mean, your favorite feel... actor or actress or performer or whatever? Someone that does something special other than themselves. Performer <laughs> Jenna Jameson. <laughs> That's my favorite performer. A, um... She was definitely acting in some of those movies. <laughs> so. <laughs> Assuming that's a stripper or porn star or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's a porn star. Oh, uh, you know so... damn well who Jenna James is. <laughs> <laughs> you I don't re- watch 3D women, okay? Oh, 3D okay. women break your hearts, okay? 2D women true. forever. 2D women. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I don't really get into a lot of like movie stars or anything. So, I mean... Dwayne Johnson seems cool. Scarlett Johansson seems cool. But like every five years they came out and Turns out they did something horrible. So mm. I try not to get attached. I feel like um, Alora is really into old kung fu movies and shit and oh, yeah. shit like that. And so she's really excited about Iko Uwais, okay. who is an up and coming like martial arts actor. So, all right. A legit answer. Very nice. Right. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I also forgot. Excited. I love Keanu Reeves just because he's awesome. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Oh, I forget Reeves. about Keanu Reeves. We yeah. All love Keanu but Reeves. see, he loves Keanu Reeves. Just- that's the thing. He's an internet sweetheart. And I'm telling you, five years from now, no. Find out no, some I don't bad no. shit. I hope not. I hope not. He's but. he's been around long <laughs> enough that that I I think he might he might squeak by. He might be he our might Mr. Rogers. Be a good one. He, he might. might be our he might. he might be our Tom Hanks. I'm I'm hoping nothing. Yeah. He'll die before it becomes goes to the yeah, next exactly. side. He'll die before <laughs> he be kid named Chad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Tim Curry. I like him. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Welcome, adventurer. Get ready. Pack a bag. Grab a snack. Set back. And hang on. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So you guys uh, just left the giant. Well, it was a, a giant swamp, uh, glaive kind of buried. Now it's just a desolate hole of steam and dead cooked fish and a giant. You're welcome. Giant <laughs> octopus uh, that died a horrible death. Uh, its name was Calamari. If and it was going to be able to talk to you guys, but obviously you killed uh, that NBC. And <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. So you this guys. This is what are, happens when I'm not there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As you guys are starting to walk down the road, uh, you see uh, Sophia laying on the ground, uh, and she's got a little bag next to her, and she's asleep. She's just laying in the middle of the road. Yeah. Did you guys lose a uh, teenager somewhere? I'm gonna walk up to her and sort of shake her shoulder and be like, "All right, time for adventure. Let's go." Oh, oh yeah, I like adventure. Let's go do that. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I was just taking a little nap in the middle of the road. Isn't isn't that why you do it? I mean, if I have to, I guess. I'm I'm asking more about like bodily harm, though. We haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> to be present and correct. Uh, right? As you say that, 
uh, about five feathers flow out of your mouth, like just <laughs> different <laughs> colors. Are you um, emotionally okay, Sophie? Um, are any of us really? Not really, but you know. Yeah, no, no, about about the usual, I think. Okay. I'm great. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> and, uh, and you're totally fine with the fact that you just coughed up a bunch of feathers? This doesn't seem odd to you? I mean, it's better than them staying down, isn't it? <laughs> better in than out, right? Fair enough. Out than in. Quite Whatever. Right set down. Fascinating. This I was correct. Was damaged. <laughs> <laughs> Merle, uh, Merle in my walks world. over to Sophie and, uh, and, and uh, starts rooting around in his pack. Um, oh, you're going to open the, the bag? Uh, yeah, he, he pulls out the um, the uh, octopus teeth and everything, and he says, hey, kid, I got you something. Thank you, Uncle Mel. <laughs> Are you going to grab the bag next to your feet, Sophia? Yes, I am. Uh, are you going to open um, it? Yeah, I'm going to peek inside. What's in the bag? Six Aarakocca heads. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to be able to make more birdie zombies now. Looks like it's right? Yeah, I'm collecting. <laughs> As she's holding it up, you see little drops of blood like coming out the bottom of this burlap sack of of horror. Oh man! I figured, I figured um, zombies are pretty scary, but imagine being pecked to death by a zombie. Be <laughs> Plus, fun. they can fly. Yeah, flying zombies. We're gonna have a lot of fun. <laughs> really <laughs> like your creative like, recycling. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> Great monsters for the monster manual. <laughs> what is that? Uh, Aarakocca zombie slash <laughs> monkey. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. Can I, like, Frankenstein this shit? Yeah, could you yeah, explain you can it do together? It, you can like, do whatever you want with it. When you grow trees oh. and you, like... You I mean, it's kind of, like, down the necromancy path, but, yeah, you can... Oh, is it not yeah, already? Yeah, necromancy. Oh, oh is really? that a thing I would do? You, you think that's not where Sophie's going, huh? <laughs> well, was that not the first thing I said when you gave me some ninth level spell slots? Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I regretted it. I keep listening to the soundbite. <laughs> going, fuck. It plays <laughs> over. That's why he's not sleeping. No, no. That's that's Kelly. That's when Kelly says, fuck you, Kelly. Uh, and that <laughs> effect, like macaroni art before the spell If you listen happened. to the end of the episode that I just posted we actually have that same little comment where you're like i have a ninth level spell and i can have 12 zombies and i'll just bring them mm -hmm. back to life if they die and i'm like oh fuck and, and that's where it cut <laughs> off. But, uh, that is exactly what happened i just yep. listened to it mm, I haven't okay. it. that sounds about right yeah mm -hmm. so uh you guys are basically uh yeah you got little so sophia uh the road is still it's roughly like two cart lengths wide so that elephant has room to maneuver the woods are pretty thick uh, as usual as you've been going down the road it's been the same the whole time are you guys gonna okay. keep going or uh, mm -hmm. so what do we got for vehicles are we walking we're in the back of this wagon right well, a elephant. wagon is usually just used to like hold supplies so we're probably walking mm -hmm. next to the wagon yeah it's good car. We could probably fit a couple people on there if they I need to. Uh, no, I'm not walking. I was just trying to figure out the speed. <laughs> uh, the it's as fast as the elephant can pull the cart. <laughs> and Stampy's pissed as shit, so Stampy's is taking I, a seat. I think we're probably going like a normal pace, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we don't need to do like a force march or anything right now. Oh, God, mm -hmm. no. Uh, Merle still has a horse, too. It's about midday as you guys continue... Uh, moving along and as you're going down the path it seems to slowly widen just a little bit uh, as you keep going down and it's now about either it's about 12 yards <laughs> or 36 feet wide uh, you can fit multiple carts now and Who runs uh, is that? what it's a, it's about two elephants wide at this point. I'm, I'm just wondering how many rods. I mean, that's a typical measurement of a road. Is... Yes. Oh my God. Whatever. I... How many it depends on how big the butt color? of the elephant is. <laughs> well, this isn't that's a typical thick, road. Oh, just a regular elephant. <laughs> Medieval road. See, I knew everybody's going to go off about the measurements. So, like, later on, I actually did lots of measurements for things and different, you know, the American way and the rest of the world. 
Does the road have a name? So you mean the right way and the wrong way. Right, right. Oh, I got it. <laughs> America. America. Uh, so along the tree line, uh, the trees are spaced pretty decently. You can look into the woods. You don't really see anything. Uh, it's about, about 3 o'clock, and you guys start to get to, uh, mm. as the road widens, you see a huge, like, grove. And along this grove, you see a massive wall that seems to circle uh, in the middle of this uh grove which appears to be about three thousand yards or 900 meters wide or 1.7 miles wide or 2.74 kilometers i'm only concerned with measurements if i'm fucking fighting okay <laughs> just, just <give laughs> get me on my idea. ass because i'm asking how far away can my spell reach yeah <laughs> sorry so right now, just not have measurements and assume every spell hits I only care when we're fighting. So, I need to know the actual measurements so that I can confirm that Kelly does in fact know how to do math. So that, that <laughs> just, <laughs> makes me feel better. Right, right. Giant acne anvil do it for crushes Quentin. I mean, Kelly's <laughs> best math is oh, fuck done it. at uh, <laughs> long distance. Um, yeah, yeah, his best math is done like over there. I think I can get there with this giant bomb. Yeah, yeah I can lob <laughs> things. You know, I'm good at uh, estimating range. Okay. okay uh, so, ser ser serious question though is is the wall surrounding the grove or is the no 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 is the wall cutting the grove off from the the road? Uh, from which you can tell, the road goes straight through the the giant uh, wall that you see. Okay. It looks like a town, basically. That's a okay. giant oval, the, and it's in the middle of this giant grove. So like the trees spread out, and they go for miles. And you can't really. I guess you could try to estimate how wide this area is, but it's pretty big. It's kind of hilly, so it, you know, you, you basically know this is a giant open. All right, so it's like a, a ring of trees surrounding the ring wall, which surrounds the town. Yeah. Okay. And then okay, it's, do we see a gate? Uh, you're a mile and a half away. Uh, you, the only reason why you, why you got that much detail is that this wall is huge, and you see a giant, massive tower in the middle, or you assume is the middle of the the walled area and you see two giant spire uh like they look like uh uh smokestacks one of them is very dark and bellowing black smoke and the other one is uh really shiny and appears to be copper and it has like a whitish uh smoke emanating from it and and the, the two smokestacks are inside the town yeah yeah they're all inside or okay. it's like it, all the oh the tower is also inside the town okay yeah, this everything is, is inside the town, but it's okay, it's, it, it's big it. enough that you can tell that you know mm. it's a massive town. Uh, you do okay. if you, the road leads straight to the gate, so yeah, you can kind of see the difference of the gate. It was really it's built into the 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 wall itself, um, but you can tell like where the gate would open. So what would you guys like to do? Black smoke. So the, I did have a question. A new pope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the way here, did we see any like small cities in the forests or anything, or is this like the first civilization we've come across? This is the first major city. Uh, when okay. you guys left the pat, the the little like outpost, they yeah. they told you that the city of Alm was down this road, oh. and this is the first big city you'll run into. Uh, I say in. we go for it. <laughs> There's nothing along here. The city of Om, like a meditation thing, like a yoga oh. thing. It's a city. In I Germany. really hope so. Or they couldn't come up with a name for the city. <laughs> What's your city name? Oh. Uh, well, is it Om or Om? It's Om. Om. It's like a. It's a German city. Yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now that we're done bagging on my host country. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a real place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it looks like this though. No, no, it doesn't. What is Every city that you guys go to um, is in this area named after a German city. And right. uh, all the rulers are named after German kings. All of the areas that you go to will be named after German stuff, except for like a few areas. But basically, this whole area is after German history stuff. Okay. Is it OLM? Is that how you spell OLM? Uh, you... <laughs> LM. Ulm. 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 Okay. Uh, Isn't there so, H in there? No. 
No, I was looking it up earlier today. I was like, okay. I'm crazy. They always throw H's in weird places, so that's just yeah. me. <laughs> is, there, is there a place in the city where with some of the crap that's in his bag, he wants to sell some stuff? So we're just going to skip the whole like getting to the gate and talking to them. Let's go straight to I shopping. Thought we, I thought we were already. Well, go do it. Sell it to the we guards. Um, <laughs> no, let's talk to the guards at the gate. Absolutely. What are the you guys going to go? Get to the gate. Well, Before we get to the gate, size. I'm going to cast an 8th level armor of gathers. Oh, wow. How long does oh, that last? Concerned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're expecting an some hour. problems, are we? <laughs> okay. Because you're in, memory, 1.5 miles away from the gate. That's what I said before we get to the gate. Like, oh, okay, right okay. before. Okay. I just wanted Doesn't to make sure. Doesn't it last for like eight hours, though? Doesn't matter. One now. hour. One hour. Only an hour? Oh. Yeah. But I that have an 8th level spell I need combat. to cast. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were just burning it to to be cool, but I'm like, oh, okay, he's just doing it because he has to get rid of it so he doesn't lose it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you guys start making your way as you're going down this road. Uh, on one side is um, it's it's all farmland in this little area. As you get closer, one side is corn, the next side is hay or alfalfa. You know, it's just growing wheat. Sorry, it's wheat. Uh, but no one's in there. Working. It grows dry and sticky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right out <of> the ground. <laughs> Burns you. It's it's like dandelions waving in the wind. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but you don't see anybody out in the fields or anything. And as you're getting close to the, uh, the wall, does anybody want to do perceptions? You're just going to go to the front. Oh yeah, I, I definitely yeah. do. I want to be looking around and um, very interested in the city. So I believe that is a 19. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, as you're walking, you notice that there's it appear to be fire breaks every um, 50 meters as you walk in. But as you look down them, you actually see small rivers of some black tarish stuff. And it seems to go for, you know, forever. Uh, no way to grow corn. <laughs> it's gonna be nasty corn yes man uh, what is do i recognize what it is or is it just does it smell or is it just like tar are you gonna go up to it and like sniff it and no, investigate no. It? okay yeah definitely, uh, no, i don't want to get off the road sniff the black pudding <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i just don't want to leave the road we're, we're so, not yeah. level one we should be fine with the black pudding so, <laughs> not if you snort it the fire break the fire breaks are three feet wide and the little river inside of it is uh, uh one and a half hmm. uh, but it looks like it's man-made uh trench little thing it's it looks like it goes down pretty pretty deep interesting what's in the trench what's in the trench uh the, what's in the box yes uh anybody else so it's is, it's it's the it's the fire breaks, but then there's trenches in between that seem to be of some tarish black, probably flammable liquid. So, right, like I get the fire breaks because there's there's dragons and such, but the flammable liquid doesn't make sense. Okay, all right, that's interesting. Well, we don't know it's flammable. Maybe maybe we should. Maybe it's anti flammable. No, that's true. That's true. Maybe but we should it, go I would, and try and get it. it. Yeah. Mm, thanks, CM. I'll file um, that yeah. away. <laughs> Guys, it's a river of chocolate. Yay! <laughs> Augustus. Augustus. Uh, this is a world of pure imagination. You guys, it takes about 15 minutes to do a mile. So you guys, anybody else want to do as you get closer? Am I jogging? Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll make a... I'm sorry, I do 15-minute miles. I mean, maybe not right <laughs> now. Do you walk? But... Yeah. Or... <laughs> What's it like... Carriage? Never mind. It's no. not a right. oh, <laughs> carriage. God, I'm not an ox. God, oh, there's an elephant. <laughs> yes. that I've we're ne yeah, I, I've never been on a cart dragged by an elephant before. I'm not sure how fast they. Yeah, so travel. maybe maybe half an hour to get to getting close to the tower. How's that? Half an hour. Sure. Uh, Sounds more whatever. Realistic. It doesn't matter. And Merle, 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 I'm just being a shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Merle, roll the twenty six for perception. Uh, of course. So uh, as you get close, <laughs> I see that side eye. Uh, as you get close, I know, I know. As you get close, you you see um, basically the t the wall appears to be. You estimate maybe thirty or forty feet 
uh, in, in length. Uh, you can't you can't tell that it's dense, but you do see there's uh, towers every uh, 20 yards or so that like people are walking and they disappear into these towers. They're medieval turrets, basically. Uh, and then on the ends, every 100 meters or 50 meters, you see giant ballistas just sitting on top of like rotating platforms and they're constantly moving. You mean it's 30 feet deep or high? The, what do you mean? You said it's 30 feet foot in length, and I don't think that. No, no, the the width of the wall. So it's 30 feet wide. Okay. Okay. And 50 feet tall. No, I was just clarifying. Yeah, Yeah, because I thought it was like going across the whole valley. No, no, it is, but it's just a massive protective wall. Okay, cool. Are there large, giant people? inside the wall no you see like picks and like stuff know, like yeah. moving you can't yeah, see how tall they are but as you're getting close you, do see the, you see the giant ballistas that are uh mm-hmm. are rotating and you uh kind of see maybe it's dwarves because they seem to be rotating the thing uh constantly dwarves. it's going in a 360 um and they have huge like arrows on the end of them Merle's kind of, uh, he's apprising the defenses of the, of the city and he's, he's nodding appreciatively. Um, he's, he's getting very into warfare with this whole, uh, war cleric thing. Um, and he's like, yeah, this place is, uh, they're doing okay for themselves. I don't know. It looks Serene like the just waves short. at the, the dwarves. Hi. <laughs> so one of the ballistas stops rotating and stops and then turns and looks at you guys and angles itself. It's not going to fire, but it angles itself in you guys' general direction. <laughs> uh, Giant oh, arrow. It only hit one of us. Like, <laughs> waving at the snipers in DC while you're like hanging out on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, as you get about 50 uh, feet away from the uh, giant massive door that you now see uh brent do you want to activate your thing or are you gonna yeah all right well that goes Ooh. off <laughs> and uh once once your spell goes off the other ballista turns and looks at your general direction the other ones are too far away this is a massive wall uh and you hear like you see people moving frantically on top of the tower and as you get uh past the corn and the uh wheat there's huge spikes that come up out of the ground at an angle facing outward away from the tower itself or the wall uh, as you guys walk further to the door. And they seem to raise up as soon as you guys, you know, cross the level of uh, the stuff on both sides. That's not like very friendly. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just Quentin, being cautious, probably. Quentin's going to stand up and put his hands up. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> Computer people, real people coming through. Okay. <laughs> Open up Computer the gates. people. Oh no. <laughs> we've got our we've got our, our player wristband, so just everyone point your little bows and arrows somewhere else. We're coming through. We also have a yeah, um, can we uh, enter, what is it please? called? Like a, a document of entry. Oh yeah. Um, so when you guys yeah. get to the door, these doors are massive. And as you got up to them, you realize that these doors don't open inward or outward. It seems like there it's just like a slit that you see and there's like a two foot indent so that you recognize that that's a door. Uh, and it looks like it goes like into the wall. Cool. Uh, and speaking. as you get there, there's two towers and uh, there's a line of people up at the top. You know, now that you guys have announced yourself. And Jason, tell us about your armor. Uh, well, the armor's just like a uh, thin veil of frost pretty much covering my whole body. Um, and I'm standing on top of the wagon with one foot up on the top and kind of in a Captain Morgan pose. Is you there call- some shrinkage going on? Yeah. It looks like. It, it looks like- <laughs> just a tiny bit. Not too much. <laughs> He's nipping, but okay, if we want to go to shrink it. I can cut some glass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, so as you guys approach the, the gate, uh, it's still really high uh, up, so you can kind of see people, and they, they're they leaning over, and you, yeah. you hear a, what? 
What do you want? We want to come in. We have a document of entry. Oh. We're looking for a place to stay for the night. Commerce. Right. Hold on, hold on. And you know, dramatically here, the footsteps uh, stepping down. It seems like he's going down to the bottom level. Uh, and as you get to the actual gate, there is a slit on one side of the uh, of the gates, and uh, about four feet up off the ground, and it slides open. Okay, I will lean down a little bit and look and say hi. <laughs> ah! <laughs> we wish access to the Emerald City. Yeah. <laughs> Here. We would like, like to come in. It's just so grumpy. Uh, here, we have a city pass here. Ah, right, okay. Present it to them. All right. <laughs> multi pass. Multi pass. He's like, mm. cracks open the seal, and he's like, oh yes, yes. I mean, he he shut the little thing, so it, you can hear him on the other side. Uh, and he's like, uh, a mooter pass. All right, there's five of you, and so you can all enter, right? <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. yep. All right. Cool. There's uh, five of us. Five of us I think there's six of us. Oh. Seven if you count Stampy. Oh, Let's no. See. Yeah, animals it's... come in with you. Cusco's here, too. <laughs> it's stuffed in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> that's the penguin, right? Uh, yeah. Children the... are, ent they enter for free, right? <laughs> oh, yes, She's children. Under children. 12. Uh, <laughs> And a, a little horn Same pops out the top, and he's like, okay, so, uh, all right, so you have six plus two animals and a cart? Y yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, cool. Well, and he, like, shoves a, another scroll through the little slot and shuts the door, and he, he walks away. What does it say? Are you going to open it? Yes, no, of throw course. it on the ground. <laughs> and you disappear in a bright flash. Now, uh, <laughs> no, uh, you open it, and it's basically uh, your entry, your your scroll back. You know, the same scroll you put in there or letter. It's just rolled up and has a new stamp, and it has uh, like two or three different signatures on it, acknowledging that you're coming in. And it's got like four more stamps in it, and uh, customs and all that jazz. Uh, Is this guy... our passport? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the guy gets back to the top and he's like, all right, open the gate. And then like they scurry off to the sides and then the gate slowly like cranks open as uh, you, it's like rock sliding. And as it opens, you can tell that the wall, like the gate itself, super thick. Uh, like they're trying to keep something out or something in. You're not really sure. Well, we're going to find the out, Dominus huh? Dominus Rex. I hand the the our passport back to Alora because I think she might be the responsible adult in the party. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I take it and pretend I mean, like I'm. Yes, of course, I am responsible. Uh, I mean, Quinn would also be. Quinn would also be happy to take the bureaucratic paperwork. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm also pretty familiar with. You. <laughs> you were too far away, Quentin. You it's were bad. still in the mine part. <laughs> Give it to the good. lawyer. You keep bad. saying yes when she offers you shrooms, so. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god, don't eat them. I thought it was a power up. <laughs> That's what yes. they all say. I Every thought I was going to get extra lives. It kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Power up your mind. Just yeah. another soul lost to, you know. Open your mind's limits. I thought I was going to be able to shoot fireballs or jump you and hit bricks or could, something. You probably could. You could in your mind. <laughs> Okay. Isn't that really the only thing that's real? Yeah, that's so from, So, uh, Merle, from the exterior, you you saw a total of 12 century towers, uh, four giant ballistas that you could recognize, or eight that you saw from outside, and then you, know, you don't need, uh, you figured out that there's about four people per tower. So Merle, uh, Merle wants to talk to one of the guards. Is there one that uh, that looks like he's more important than the rest? Like yes. higher rank? Uh, as you guys walk in, it's it's huge. This area is huge, and about another eighty meters, like straight, the road cracks into two, turns into two roads, and then there's another wall with inside this wall. Oh. So Merle's surprising more defenses. He's Go, dog. 
Yeah, this is. Uh, and it, this wall doesn't actually have any uh, towers on it. That's why you didn't see them from the distance. Uh, it's actually built into the tower, so you see areas where there's like like people can fire bows and stuff from inside of the wall. Uh, you right. can't really see too much into the wall. Just like there's little creases that you can hear voices and movement, and you Better see the hold. occasional yeah. arrow tip hanging out. Nice. Yeah. So is there is there a guard around that's uh, that looks like uh, like a captain of the guard or something like that? Yeah. As all of you walk in, uh, animals and all. There is, you walk through a giant archway and it goes for the distance uh, till the road splits. And then aligning this little area, little enclosed area, there's little, uh, looks like, um, like booths and they're lined up and there's a guard behind each one of them. And uh, people are walking up and they're putting their weapons on these tables and the guards are writing stuff down and there's a line uh of folks oh god tsa you have to get peace bonded. <laughs> peter's security <laughs> we have to peace bond our weapons <laughs> so hi guys i can get through quicker because i have a new you oh yeah Yours. <laughs> here's my weapons giant bag of heads <laughs> well, we've been trying to hunt those folks down for a while. Good job. Yes, yes, that's what that was about. Yes. Uh, so it takes about 10 minutes, but uh, each one of you gets to go to a table, and uh, before you can get past uh, the little turnstile that they have in place, uh, which is act actively glowing, so its magic is visible, uh, so you can't just charge in and go past it i mean you so, could yeah, you could <laughs> Bad exactly. things might happen. <laughs> you can always try as your legal counsel i would advise against it so what are, I, i'll go i'll anything. go first and the okay. only weapon type thing that i have is uh is a stun gun and i'll pull that out and i'll put it on the thing and i'm i don't have any other weapons uh, a little gnome stands up on the table uh, he went up a little set of steps when you walked up to the little thing, and he's like, ah, rah, rah, rah. and he like walks over to your stun gun. He's like, ah, and he like clicks the button like near his face, and it's like, da, 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 da. and he's like, ah, ah. <laughs> he, he kind of like sets it down. He's like, ah, rah, rah, and grabs out the smallest piece of paper you've ever seen, well, not <laughs> ever seen, but <laughs> he pulls out a little quill and he starts. What else do you got? Uh, you just wanted to know about weapons, correct? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, anything that's considered harmful to the citizens of this fair little town. This is literally the only harmful thing that I have. Okie dokie. Uh, if you just step over there into that little box and uh, we'll just confirm that. And okay. I, I kind of believe her. She doesn't literally have the intent of harm with most of her magic. <laughs> so. uh, as, she goes as, in the box. <laughs> What's in the box? Uh, <laughs> as soon as she sit <laughs> down... Uh, wet tentacles kind of wrap around your mm. forehead and then another set go around your hands and you hear a voice are you carrying any other items with you that is considered dangerous to the people around you not that i'm aware of okie dokie and then they, they retract them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually <laughs> uh before it releases you uh a little like uh gnome walks in with a like little miner's hat and he's like cheese and he like hits a button and it takes a picture of you and he goes okay and <laughs> all clean and he goes down his little ladder and okay. goes away and then you get out and you're good to go and they hand you just like tsa <laughs> they hand you another little... notice the pretty white girl got through without any problems huh? <laughs> uh -uh. Uh -huh. quinn's on the ground it's not mine <laughs> 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 you're you're given a nifty little book and they stamp the first one all right checkpoint one you're good to go ma'am thank you can i have my stun gun back or no and he goes yeah sure and he like goes to pick it up oh be careful <laughs> okay and he's like turns to you and it's like da, 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 da. and he's like here you go and he tries to hand it to you and you, you got it he successfully didn't kill Wait, himself we get it back that's good 
Yeah, you just have to show them your dangerous stuff. You get it. Yeah, they, so they know if you use it on anyone. Maybe. They track it. Uh, okay, next. Is someone going to a different table or is um, someone going to the yeah, normal one? Mer- Merle's going to Merle's gonna go next. He's got some pretty humorous things that are about to happen. Uh, are, you go- <laughs> are you going to the so, gnome one or are you going to go to a different one? Um, I can go to a different one. There's gnomes and dwarves. I'll go to a dwarf. All right. You walk up to his little table. Nice. Finally done. This thing looks like it's been polished. It looks like he's taking care of his little little block of space and and you know he's put some work into it some nice etchings and stuff and he goes oh yeah all your stuff oh, look at you yeah he looks you up and down oh, and he tugs like on both sides of his beard yeah so merle merle looks at him and says uh good dwarf sir um there's gonna be a lot of stuff on this table in a minute do you maybe want to put down a cloth or something so i don't ding the wood because this is a lot yeah he puts his finger up and he Pulls out this giant horn. Huh? <laughs> um, I'm about to take a lot of weapons off and put them on your table. Do you want to put maybe a cloth down so I don't ding the wood? It looks like it, you just put a nice finish on it. Ah! Puts it down and pulls out this little like burlap covering and he throws it over the top. He's like, ah! There, ah. Yeah, so um, Merle, Merle says, uh, I, I need you to understand that some of these weapons are bonded to me and they, they have to come back, but I'll, I'll certainly put everything on the table. Um, and and uh, he, he starts with a sword, he unbuckles it, uh, puts it on the table, and then uh, um, he takes his bow off and puts that you down. You dick! <laughs> He puts he puts his bow down. He uh, he takes out he takes out his uh, his blunderbuss pistol there that shoots the cannonballs. Puts that down. Then he takes out his regular pistol. He puts that down. And he takes off. Uh, let's see what else he got. Um, he's got uh, a knife. He puts that on the table. Um, he also. <laughs> As he's cataloging what you're putting down, he's like, oh, 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 oh. and he's just like adding it all up. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, and, and Merle's like pulling them out of places that are like, you know, like the, the, the gun is like strapped to his leg. So he's, you know, he takes it, it's like strapped to a joint in his armor and then like the knife in his boot. And the, yeah, so he's just emptying out a bunch of places. And, and he's like, uh, he says to the guy, what about spells? How do I do? Do you want to know what I have, or oh, everything's no, have a to... weapon here? This is yeah. all a weapon. Yeah, you're gonna need to put this on, and he throws like a collar onto the table. He's like, ah, you need to put that on, magic users. Uh, and uh, uh, were you adjusting your? Were you undoing your chest plate to pull stuff out? Uh, no, he didn't have to undo his chest plate. Okay. Um, all right. He pretty but he does fight. He does have like a pretty, you had to uh, remove your chest plate to draw a weapon. Yeah. He does have a pretty big <laughs> problem, uh, pretty big problem with the collar. Um, I don't see Merle putting that collar on. Uh, well, uh, uh, sir, me is gonna just sho- shove you out the way. Like, it's my Please, turn. You don't ask about the spells; you just go through. All right. Well, <laughs> Merle's for, trying to be honest. I mean, you know, for, for well, the bless magic him users, for that. Bless him. Yeah. The magic users have to wear the collar uh, until you get to the cloister, and then once you get in there, you can take it off. But we don't allow magic within the the, the old city. Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to your supervisor. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, Karen. <laughs> this is not the first time Merle has requested to speak to a supervisor. In this and, uh, just put just put the collar on. He walks no over. Video. He puts his hand up, and it it says. Uh, customer service bell and he like pulls it and it's like and he's like just a moment sir and a couple minutes later a uh, gentleman <laughs> walks over <sighs> another dwarf uh, so uh I, I, what can uh, i do for you well well uh, good master dwarf um i uh I, i've certainly complied with your rule on weapons they're all there for you to catalog and count um I have explained that I am a magic user. I'm certainly uh, um, amicable, and I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to uh, use any of my magic while in the city limits. But I'm not going to be putting on any sort of wall. <laughs> Sir, that's what everybody says when they come here.
Yeah, Merle's not putting on a collar. Oh, geez, he is customer service. But it totally goes with your armor, Merle. Well, it's either you put the collar around your neck or uh, you put these little wristbands on. And he pulls out two little pinkish wristbands. Ooh, those are pretty. Wristbands. All right, so they're not linked by a chain or anything? No, not at all, sir. He's not really into bondage. Merle's going to mull it over. Um, Whatever. He's definitely not wearing the collar. He's more likely to wear wristbands. He gets that. I mean, you know, it's like going into a club. Um, he's, he's, he's okay with the wristbands. He'll wear the wristbands. Does Merle go to a lot of clubs? <laughs> uh, well, when he was in college, he went to a few clubs. Um, he's got know, a chain of pacifiers in his back pocket. <laughs> there's just something about wearing oh, a shit. collar that's very demeaning to Merle, and he's not going to wear it. All right, cool. All right, sir, we'll go ahead and gather all your stuff up. Uh, I need you to sign this here. What am I signing? Uh, basically stating you you will not use any of your weapons or powers within these walls. Merle, Merle, calls, Merle, Merle calls out to Quentin. Um, uh, let, me, let me consult with my attorney. Let me consult with my lawyer. attorney. Um, <laughs> dun, dun. Quentin, hey, Quentin, can you take a look at this contract I'm, right, I'm, I'm supposed to be signing? You haven't signed anything yet, correct? Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, let me take a look at this. Uh, Quentin will use his lawyering. I suppose. <laughs> is that a profession? Is that, which, yeah, is that, that my skill? profession? Yeah, which one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you put points into profession, then you can do that. Yep. I do have points Oh, God, is that a scene infested? I actually don't know. No, I'm thinking about it. Um, oh, no, profession isn't a thing anymore, is this? 3.5. No. Or the, I'm thinking 3.5, yeah. No, but um, um, we gave, I gave everybody, you know, one outside ability to bring into the game, uh, right? Skill wise, so you I can, mean, you can use lawyering that. would be my skill. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. We're gonna. All right. We, we just made a new skill for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition: lawyering. Lawyer. Lawyering. Lawyering. is a valid skill. <laughs> it is. I feel like it's like. That's gonna be a nat twenty. Oh. All plus, right. Uh, well, plus five, so that's a twenty-five on lawyering. Yeah. So uh, as you're reading the fine print, you realize that the this, this parchment is not magical. Uh, and the writing basically says that uh, you've agreed upon, I'm not using your powers, weapons, or anything that you carry on your persons to engage in any unlawful combat within these walls. Um, Matt, Master Dwarf, just a point of order here. Uh, it says unlawful combat is prohibited. What would signify the difference between lawful and unlawful combat? If you started a fight with someone and they ended up dead. So we can fight That's as lawful. long as they don't oh. die? What if what if someone starts a fight with us and they end up dead and we're not the one who starts it? Right. Dead? If we end it, that is that is still acceptable under the under the structures of the law? Uh, right. That's that's called murder. I think it's technically manslaughter. Is it's is self defense lawful? Well, I mean, yeah, to a point, but when you viciously murder someone, it, 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 we'd go to court and, and deal with it within the trials right, of, right. Of, of the cloister. And then we okay. So Merle, right. Merle, Merle holds a hand up to Quentin and says, I think I understand this. It, my, my daddy always taught me never to start a fight, but always to end it as quickly as possible. So, and, and I think legally speaking, you could end the fight up to and perhaps including grievous bodily harm, but any further than that might end us up in more legal trouble than we care to be in. Yeah. Merle, Merle just wants to look down at his chest piece real quick and uh, I don't think there's a body cam on this. I think we're good. <laughs> oh my Wait god. <laughs> As okay. your legal counsel, and I'm I did like, not what? hear you say that. Nope. No, you get the you document need... does seem to be uh, does seem to be legitimate. Uh, All right. Just oh. don't start no fights. Merle, Merle, will, Merle will agree and sign the document. I guess. Listen, oh, you, cool. You, 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 this group, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Now you have a cop and a lawyer in the group. The shit could get kind of weird. Now we just need a judge. <laughs> oh, and order. Yeah, right. because Sophie's clearly the executioner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you would think such a thing. Once you're dead, I'll bring you back. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count. Wait, can I do? No, I can't do that. But yeah, um, you can do whatever uh, you want. <laughs> a minor um how does yeah i just said that by the way guys did you hear i can do whatever yeah. i want yeah i heard i guess i missed <laughs> that i'm sorry 
I'm writing that down in my notes. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Sophia can do whatever, whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it was as a member of the court, I am uh, making this a legal document. <laughs> is one of us going to have to be? It. Is one of us going to have to be her guardian while she's in the city limits? <gasps> Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, I think mom. that's on you. That's on you, Uncle Merle. Yeah. Be cool older sister. <laughs> well, but, uh, Uncle Jason was a thing too. Yeah, that's yeah. True. not not first though. Uncle Merle was first. Then again, Uncle Merle has one child already, so maybe you know uh... what? I'll be I'll be her guardian. I'll oh, that's her. good. Who's gonna be your guardian? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> who who's up next? I can go next. Okay. Would you like to go to the gnome or the dwarf? To the gnome. Yeah. He seems cute. Mm-hmm. And he, for some reason, he keeps going down the steps, and he comes back up, and he's like, "Ha." Oh, he's got a little red hat and a blue coat. Oh, wonderful! Hello. Do you, hi. you need? To, hi. Um, I have a needle sword. Oh. And I know, isn't it cute? And the knife. Um, <laughs> runs his finger he's across. Like, he's like, ah. <laughs> you know, if your job is weapons inspector, you really do need to be a little bit more cautious. Um. I don't know if this counts as a weapon, but I have quite a lot of heads and skulls at this point. Do you need <laughs> to wait, inspect wait, wait, those? Maybe he steps back. He's like, what, 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 what? Hold on now. I open the bag with the Arakokra heads in, just to show him. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, lawyer, I roll the one. I roll the one. He loses it. He can please... He is lost. And he literally falls into the bag, like, uh, uh, and he's like, oh no! And he like, <laughs> it's in the bag, and he, all you hear is, uh, 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 uh. Please, please don't vomit on those. I need them. <laughs> it's like, uh, he like, opens Jerry, up a beak, and he's like, you, Jerry? Rawr. We're going to have to ask Auntie Alora real nice to clean those up. Oh, he thank crawls you. out of the bag. He's like, uh, <laughs> okay, what else do you have? Um, I have an octopus, and I clap my hands, and little baby Cthulhu appears on my shoulder. Oh, you uh, do oh, magic! Oh, oh yay! Oh, yeah, yay! <laughs> I have a robot bear. Oh my god, look at you, you got all kinds of stuff. Oh, you're going to do great in the forge section. Oh, they have cool things in there. Oh, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I do magic, so I don't know what I have to do. Ah, you got to put on the spike collar, and he like, pulls it, drags it onto the counter. Okay, when you say spiked collar here, what are we talking? Are we talking like those horrible choke collars that people use to train dogs? No, no. Or no. this is no, spiked no, 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 like, like, like gothic. Okay, so it's like we're just punking up my look a bit. Yeah, yeah the, wild, wild the, the spikes are facing the opposite direction. Right. They're not facing inward. I just want to make topic. sure before yeah. I agree to. Okay. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I mean, I prefer gothic Lolita more than industrial goth, but I suppose I can live with that. What does that mean? <laughs> Don't worry. That's what my dad said, too. Uh, and, and as soon as she put it on, uh, you could feel that all magic uh, is completely inert on you. And the voice that you've kind of been hearing from the stone is quiet. What about my octopus? Is he gone? Yeah, he disappeared as soon as you put it on. Oh, well, that sucks. He was about to say his first couple words, like, hey, how's it... <laughs> oh well, I still have I'm my robot bear. Sent you. <laughs> I still have my robot bear because he's technology, not yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good with you're good with that one. Isn't good, good. isn't that considered like the fourth magic or something? Like technology? no, no, it's 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 a tinker. It's brain, you know brain. constructed creature or a constructed thing. Don't take my bear from me. <laughs> yeah, what a monster! Yeah, who's yeah, a bear from out. a child? You didn't feel you quite really calm. Suggested it. No, I was just trying to clarify. I was trying to understand. You feel quite calm now that you don't have Teddy in your head. Uh, he's been there for a while, but he's the one that told you to kill all of the Aarakocra in their sleep. Uh, oh, and they were super nice sense. to you, but you know, you're starting to have flashbacks oh. of like running over and grabbing one that's been sleeping and then just like a uh, turkey just like swing his neck around. He's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it's good to know that Sophia... Good, 
good to know Sophia isn't trying to fight the evil voices in her head at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't entirely aware of the evil voices until now. So. <laughs> Apparently you just leaned right into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, only, the only reason why you're getting slight dreams of, or memories of it is because when you fell asleep is when you did all your dirty work. So, uh -huh. uh, little insight. Okay, uh, who's next? That's this is why Kevy doesn't this. sleep. I'll go uh, for it. Yep, go for it. Okay, you're going to do the gnome or the dwarf? I, uh, let me roll a d2, because it really doesn't matter. It's a gnome. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a different gnome, because the other one's like, ah, fuck this, and he like, walks down. <laughs> he <laughs> it's covered. His in... <laughs> <laughs> so this one pops up, and he's wearing he a blue hat with a red coat. Oh. A blue hat with a red coat. Okay. Um, hello. hello. Uh, I'm going to pull out my rapier and oh, okay. several parts of a sniper rifle. Wow, what is that? Do you want me to put it together now? It's it's a gun. What's that? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> What's it do? Um, uh, It's kind of like a magic wand. You point at things and they go away. Ah, so you do magic. Um, yeah, oh, yes, I, I do have magical abilities. All right, hold on one second. I got to... Which rope is that? And he like pulls a rope down, and there's like uh, a bag of like snakes. You can hear them hissing, and he's like, "Nope, nope, wrong one." All right, hold on. All right. Pulls <laughs> another one down. Bag. <laughs> he nice. pulls one down, and like a whole bucket of water falls on the dwarf that has like the little like cup thing, and it fills in his his ear thing. He's like, "Oh!" <laughs> and he's like, "Nope, nope, not that one." And he pulls down another one, and uh, a collar drops on the table, and he goes, "Oh, I'm oh, sorry, ma'am. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to wear this." This is so unceremonious, but okay. Oh, you, you can have the cuffs instead. No, it's fine. Just okay. usually, you know, some bonding that happens before this. Um, oh, yeah, I put the collar on. Y'all think a safe word yet? <laughs> yeah. We have some cool, cool. trust established, uh, usually. And, and as you guys are going through this, they're handing you little stamp books, and it has Ulm on the front of it, and then when you open it, it has passport pages uh, and checkpoint, and then it has a list of different uh, shops and places to go to inside. Uh, <laughs> some, uh, some coupons. And the front page. <laughs> yes. No, no. There, there is yeah. literally, there's uh, one free drink, uh, you know, at the different places. The purchase places. of a large fry. <laughs> uh, Just one know, large fry? 50% off at, at the, like, one, really of the, one like of the ends. I like that. I okay. like that. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little stamp book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, did I did want to ask if um, you said that harmful magics aren't allowed. I, I am a performer. Is it okay for me to, you know, maybe use a little pizzazz in my performances? Is that allowed? Uh, you'd have to talk to the uh, the establishments. Uh, they have their own laws inside their rooms, so you would have to uh, talk to the the main person of that establishment, and they they would write you a contract. I'm sure. Uh, okay. Most of this uh, situation is dealt with within the interior of the city. Uh, but each home and shop here has its own uh, established uh, laws and orders, and yeah. That's crazy. Okay, no problem. Is, is there some sort of book in which we can read all of these laws and orders? <laughs> oh, like we could hand that to Quentin, and he could probably advise <laughs> us whether or not we're uh, reading yeah, the laws. Yeah, Quentin doesn't like the idea of all of these separate sets of laws. For establishment that's gonna welcome to things. the united states yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's 50 different yeah. sets of laws Town ordinances, <laughs> state law. yeah uh, there's 50 laws over a a, a, a 7 000 square mile you know portion yeah, of grand but, but not necessarily all in one city yeah that's that's oh, the yes. sticky part yeah. you'd have to go to like the city center and, and talk to worm uh, he's a very gentle man. He has several hundred hands. He's grateful, and he has all the books that you'll need to navigate uh, the city. This sounds like a lot of work. Sorry, did, you, did, did you just say he has several hundred hands, or did I miss no, he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's a worm, but he has hands. He's a worm. Uh, a worm who has several hundred... I don't understand. So he's like a... a a centipede? centipede. He, he's like a centipede, but he's not a centipede. He's a bookworm. Is but he, he has hands. Is he like a bicentipede? 
Yeah, but I love is that it. I don't more... think his sexuality is of our concern. Is he like a human centipede? <laughs> it could be. Yeah, yeah he's not a human centipede. Oh, he, <laughs> he has got a humor don't on Don't you him. make decisions for me. <laughs> I just feel like it's more polite to ask him in person. Right. I mean, we're talking about the guy who assumed his sword's uh, gender, so... I mean... <laughs> He's a very, very gentle man. He, but he has all the laws of books. He's been here forever. Hundreds of gentle hands. <laughs> Good so for the handsy. <laughs> yeah. What about, what about making an you... advertisement for me? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what about when his hands aren't gentle? Is there a thing for that too? Uh, <laughs> he's as gentle as you want him to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, then uh, we bring next. back the spike collars. <laughs> yeah, is, is the note getting uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I okay. believe. Oh, it's gonna get to quit today. I believe we just have the last, uh, <laughs> the Jason. most difficult of the group. Do Quentin first. Yeah, Quentin is so there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do uh, Quentin first. I, I, well, I I'm diff- I'll first. be difficult in another way, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go up to the dwarf, uh, and, I, and Quentin pulls out. Um, uh, he puts his. He's got a, a, a pistol on an ankle holster. He just puts his leg up on the table, uh, and he's just I, wearing robes. Immediately, you're, you're pushed over onto the ground because. As soon as you threw your leg, he's like, "No, it's mine!" And he like, throws you off to the ground because you kicked his uh, his uh, cover. <laughs> his really nice stable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So Quentin falls on his ass. Uh, Merle, Merle's like, "Hey, isn't that like some kind of violation of the, I, the laws?" I feel like I was <laughs> he, like, walks away unlawfully <laughs> assaulted. <laughs> we don't mess I'm with him. I'm sorry if I recall correctly from the. Contract. Contract. It makes Technically, it we're not in the town oh, yet. Quentin. Oh my! Oh my neck! Oh my goodness! My neck! Oh, it hurt. <laughs> the guy, the other dwarf, he looks down at you and is oh, like, "Sir, you haven't signed any contracts, so technically, we're not liable for any of your injuries in the archway." Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it stands up. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> right. So, so, so he, yeah, Quentin shrugs like, "Yeah, that's all right. That's very good." It's I mean, like a soccer um, match now. He, he takes the, the pistol. He carefully does not put his leg on the table this time. Uh, carefully places the, the, the angle uh, pistol on the table. And then he pulls his mace out, which is literally looks like just a, a, a iron rod. And somebody just kind of screwed on like a, a spiked head, like a, like you would get at medieval times. Puts All that right. down. Right, um, that's cool. That's cool as shit. He like holds it around. He picks up your gun and he's like, "Oh, what's this contraption?" And he like spins the. That's my boomstick. Uh, hold on just a second, and I just reach over and put the safety on just to be on the safe side. <laughs> oh, it's got levers, and he starts pulling the trigger. Do it. Bro, bro, just he's gone. And he's like, gun, fuck, fuck. Like nothing it happens. Works real it's well like... if you look right down the center of it. <laughs> yeah, he pulls it. Oh, cool. And he's he's like, uh. Uh, what do you want for it? For the gun? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Is there a trade uh, happening, Bill? Um, I'll tell you what I want. I really, really want it. You got <laughs> some... Leave it to the it's going to be nonsense, <laughs> just like the song. <laughs> the... Yeah, now it's stuck in everyone's head. Cultural memory. <laughs> he like rubs his head with it. And he still like put the trigger. Yeah. It's like pretty cool shit. And uh, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Wait till you actually figure out how it works. Um, give me a couple of them blank pieces of contract paper you got there, with maybe a few of them fancy seals. Oh, I I can't do that. Oh, well, I mean, I guess. I but guess he's like, I got this, and he pulls up a one pound bar of of true mithril, and he puts it on the table. It is like the shiniest metal you've ever seen. He's like, I got this. It's not refined, but you know, if you go to the forge, the forge town or the forge, you know, on the opposite side of this area, you can. They, I'm sure they could do something with it. I, I look at the uh, I look at the the, the regular players. And I'm like, is this I don't know, this is a fucking chunk of metal? Is this a good trade? I don't I don't know anything about the Merle Merle pulls out his Glock and he goes, I'm not really using this, bud. Um. Uh- there you go. Nods. Know, probably. Yeah, Quentin nods and says, uh, all right, trade. I'll take your shiny chunk of metal then. Thank you. All right, cool. And he's like, so uh, how does this work? Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, what it does is there's a, a it fires a little piece of metal real fast, and well, it kills anything that you point it at, and you pull this little trigger here. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to not point it at me. Thank you. And I kind of uh -huh. push this hand down. All right. Starts flip this flagging switch. everybody else. <laughs> yep, yep. Bro. Every, we're gonna point it down. Flip. You're gonna flip this little switch. Not now. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. But when you're ready. This is called the safety. Flip that down, uh -huh. and then you point at what you want to shoot. Not now, not now. We're just talking. We're just talking. And you uh -huh. pull that trigger, uh, and the thing that you're shooting at, bye bye. Uh, Merle, Merle raises his hand and he goes, um, "We can go over range safety if you want." And uh, he, he points off to the side, like right over there. Uh, you know, these guys can do their thing. No, I gotta go talk to some son of a bitch. I'll be right back. And he, like, <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> 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 no number two yeah. has quit his job. Another dwarf is also <laughs> special. Another it dwarf walks up to the mind. counter. I have not signed anything myself either yet, so I am not held culpable for he what totally, happens from here he on out. Totally yeah. left. He's he's gone. Another dwarf walks up and he goes, Ah, all right. Well, I'm, a, I'm assuming he's got everything. You good to go, sir? Do you do magic? Uh, uh, I, yes, I do. Uh, okay. And also, might, might I add, my mind is a dangerous item to those who break the law. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> as, as, as you, right before you finish the sentence, he pulls this giant face mask. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And he like sticks that back underneath the counter. He's like, oh, for a second there, I thought you were one of those mind people. Uh, no, okay, well, you get the collar or the cuffs. I'll I'll take the collar. I'll push right, the collar cool. on. I was like, oh, I feel like Rose McGowan from season yeah, two yeah. of Charm. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, back. Okay, you're you're good to go, sir. Uh, I just need you to sign this form here, saying that you you basically won't do anything harmful to anybody. It's the same form. It's just all a form. Okay, yeah, I sign it. That's fine. Yep. All right, cool. You got you gather your stuff up, uh, Colossus. Um, hi. Um, so I'm supposed to check anything that could be dangerous to somebody? Yes, put it right here on this nice little three foot table, please. Oh, right. Just jump up on the table, Jason. So we'll just start with, <laughs> we'll just start with things in the bag. Um, so I pull out a P9. I'm like, oh, Sophia must have given that back to me. Um, uh -oh. three magazines for it. Picks those um, up. He's like, "Oh, what's this? Yeah. Don't touch that." <laughs> right. uh, I pull out a great sword, put it on there. Whoa! And I pull out another one. <laughs> Two. Whoa! Uh, and then uh, a jar of peanuts. I'm like, if somebody's allergic, that could be bad, <laughs> probably. Fair enough. I'll give you inspiration for that one. Is that the, that Florida man that like dusted his hands with peanut butter before punching his neighbor because his right. neighbor is allergic to peanut butter? That's, <laughs> that's so fucked. Yeah. That's... Oh my god. I can't decide if I think that's terrible or if I'm just got... really How did impressed. I know that happened in Florida? I got a good Yeah, I got a good yeah. and you just scared the fuck out of me while that one so thanks. I'm sorry. Thanks for another thing to worry about. Thanks. So quick, um, quick aside. That's um, not my intention. Quick aside here. Allie, do you know about Florida man? I know about Florida okay, man. The right. world Everybody. knows Is that about international Florida man. Yeah. Okay. Oh yes, the world's okay. biggest Florida villain. Man. Is there yeah. a difference now between Florida man and America man at this point? No, no not really. As, yeah. as yeah, far as the rest specific. of the world is concerned, I'm it's asking. It's yeah. like America man has reached his true form. Okay. This is like the final form. <laughs> yeah, it's like the fully evolved God, version. It's it. when he gets his mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. <laughs> sorry, Brent. Anyway. I there. Uh, it's all right. While they're talking, I pull out a shotgun and put it on the table. Oh. Uh, a pair of brass knuckles. A uh, garrote. Um, a hacksaw. You must be one of the murderers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on a good day. Uh -oh. uh, thermite flare. Ooh, what's this? And he like, picks it up and he, like, don't, shakes don't it. Don't pull it. Don't don't stop. That, that makes fire really fast. Oh, 
Um, I pull out my one dragon shot that I have left. His eyes widen and his jaw <laughs> drops. And then I pull out uh, rifle rounds with red tips on them. I you care know? nothing more. What do you want? <laughs> uh, I pull out a hand axe. It pushes all the other stuff on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it all, take it all, take it all. Now let's talk about okay, this. I got a lot more still. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sign this. And he's like, throws a paper on the table. And, uh, and he <laughs> doesn't even look at you. And he's like, oh, look at that beautiful dragon in there. And as he stares at the round, now that you're fully looking at it within this realm, you now see that it's a glass round, and inside of it is a tiny baby dragon that's uh, orange, and it's flying around into a cir- in a circle. Oh. Can't well, let it have fancy. that. Yeah, that's not for sale. I'm just going to like pick it up and put it back in my... Oh, what do you want? And he just follows his eyes. Just follow. He's like, oh, oh, what do you want? I'll give you anything. What's anything? Uh, oh. <laughs> he like looks around. He's like, uh, uh, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabs one of the gnomes. Here, you want Jerry? You can have Jerry. <laughs> uh, he's like, well, I'm sure if you get inside the cloister, they would love to purchase that thing. That's where all the money's at. Yeah. All right. Just sign here. Yeah. Do you do magic? Of course not. You look ridiculous. Uh, what? And he looks, looks you up and down. He's like, huh. Yeah, what is that bad? He's like, uh, puts the, the cuffs or the collar. Uh, what's the difference? Well, I'll... the collar, if you use magic while wearing the collar, it'll choke you to death. And if you wear the cuffs, it'll break both your hands. Oh, that's not as bad. <laughs> I, I would, I would. Think well, no one asked what they did with so. the cuffs and go to the collar as things amp up. But uh, yeah. do I have to wear the collar on my neck? Uh, <laughs> Does it come as a cock ring? Oh my goodness! Uh, no, I, I suppose not. I can put it on your leg. What kind of like fucking Calvin Ball rules is this place? You can die or you can get an injury. You'll probably heal. I mean, no one asked. I mean, you could. uh, I shouldn't have to ask. Hey, is the punishment kill me or maim me slightly? Jason asked, so he got an answer. So, uh, yeah, you have to attach it to one of your limbs. All right. Will do. Which I mean, you have to do it in front thing. of us. Which which limb is it going on? I'm gonna drop my trousers. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> That's form fitting, so it gets to its like quarter. I cover Sophie's uh, eyes. <laughs> yeah. And yet, Alora is looking <laughs> gazingly. <Yeah. Ooh. laughs> you don't get to make those choices for me, the DM. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, uh, just really? because I am doesn't mean you can say it. <laughs> That's what you're gonna do, okay? Uh, yeah, form fits. <laughs> Ready. Right. Ugh. Wow. Don't right be next to the fights. other one. Yeah, don't get excited, dude. <laughs> He's just I standing mean, there, gripping the expands. table. <laughs> does, does the um, restriction change based on the level of magic? Uh, no, just any magic. Oh my and god! Then you have to go to court. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> Jesus. Jason, I think you may have revolutionized this town. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we might need to find a patent office while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody's got hooked up, I guess. So <laughs> you trouser back up, put your belt back on, and uh, yeah, you guys. Uh, Jason, you do realize you just put a, a spiky like collar on your cock, right? Yeah. Not the first time. He's all right. I, I'm just going to say yeah. that that might deter people from. Depends on the person. Uh, yeah, I guess. But Local orc. It's, it's important that everyone at home realizes what just happened that he put the thing on his penis. That's, that's <laughs> what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're all, we're all on the same page. All right. Great. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. They said we only had to wear it until we got to the cloister. Thank you. 
Oh god! Then he's gonna take his pants off again. No, no, he might. He could just keep it on. I mean, if he only had to wear it to guys with the puts his pan down there and tries to pull it off. Ah, there it's, we go. It's gonna be it's gonna be like always sunny in Philadelphia when the, when Frank's cock ring just falls off. And yeah, just, oh shit! What's that? That's my promise ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh fucking god! Only if he proposes to somebody with it. Oh, I can't wait Ugh. to be a player character. I have so much fun, fun uh, playing yeah. character. So, all right, you guys finally get through the uh, TSA. I guess that's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> and that uh, took about as long as it ought to, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, On the bright side, Bolero nobody talking. had a body cavity search. <laughs> oh my goodness, no, uh, no, 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 no. Let's move on. Yeah. Don't give any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, oh, one more took, thing, folks. <laughs> they only took one picture, so and that was actually to scan your body for magic items. But you're good to go. Uh, you guys all get. You guys uh, should have went in the tentacle box, and you wouldn't have to have a collar. Oh God, that, that was an option. <laughs> As a tentacle box. <laughs> you were in it. <laughs> was I? No, she wasn't. No, no. Who's in the tentacle? Only, only, only I, I went in the tentacle yeah. box. Oh, the tentacle box. Right. Right. Yeah. You should have mentioned there was a tentacle box. Teenage children on this show don't go into tentacle boxes. <laughs> if you're listening to the show and you're a child, your parents have failed you. All right. <laughs> don't go into tentacle boxes. You might want to ask. But while parents, you're why? here, don't go into. <laughs> Actually, been allowed to listen. While to you're show. here, no. one, don't go into tentacle boxes. Two, write and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and give us a five star rating and review. Oh, wait, and subscribe below. Right, and subscribe. <laughs> don't right. don't five star on, reviews don't. or don't even bother. Just don't yeah. look on Google for tentacle box. Don't go tentacle box. <laughs> oh, man. Here I go. Yeah. Oh, tentaclebox.com. Oh. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I love when you type something into Google that they know is going to be, like, weird. It Like, halfway through, it's like 10. 10 stables. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Tentacle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, she's on it again. It'll oh, stop auto filling at some point. Yeah. Don't worry. We're, like, we're all gonna have uh, we're all gonna have ads for tentacle uh, box.com on Facebook uh, by the end of the day, I guarantee. I just found yeah. out there's something called a tentacle world in 5e because They're my Google sure just lets me type about tentacles as much as I want. There absolutely is a tentacle rod in 5e. Yeah. Yep. I'm it's from, uh, now. There's some pretty sweet tentacle dice displays. It's a it's a drow weapon, yeah. If I recall, yeah, mm-hmm. yep. cool. Yeah, Sounds high like priestess whips. Would be or, into. Um, it's something that high priestess use uh, as a whip. It's from uh, yep. from out of the abyss, I think, is where it comes yep. from. Yeah, yep. Ellie, yeah. I want a tentacle rod. <laughs> is that? Ask your uncle. Allison Merle. or Sophie asking? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I also found a knife wielding tentacle when I searched for tentacle box. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, that's it. Um, okay, sorry, I'll stop looking about tentacles. So Merle still wants to find a, a, a member of the guard that's higher ranking. Um, he wants to uh, he, he wants to talk about the defenses of the city and and try and maybe see if he can help them uh, defend against the dragons a little bit better. What if I'm going to the town square? You do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Alora. That sounds boring. Well, Merle's a war cleric now. Well, bless you, Merle. I don't like war. I like to make love, not war. Why do they have to be different? (laughs) (laughs) Well, whatever you're into, Quentin. No judgment. Whatever creams your jeans. Yeah, as long as everything's consensual, (laughs) yeah. That's a new one. Why why do you gotta use the most, like, the most (laughs) visual, like, Visceral description. Ever cr- because is this the it's funniest our goal one. to gross you out Whatever every single time. Biscuit. Whatever butters your biscuit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Town Square. Let's go. Uh, he said the war thing first. Let's yeah, no, it's all right. We're, 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 are we staying stuff. together? Or are we no, we don't have to. We don't, but We don't want to split yeah. the party. Yeah, we're, 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 we're in this city. Um, it's fine. We'll split. Yeah, um, so it's fine. Nothing bad meeting. could happen. What, what we're going to do is dun, we're going to, as you guys are getting inspected, Merle, you're standing next to the guy that walked over when you said you wanted to talk to someone important. Yeah. And he goes, oh, oh, um, 
well, that's not me. <laughs> I'm just in charge of these folks. But if you want to talk to the, the captain of the guards, I mean, uh, Cyprus, he's in the uh, town square and you can set up an appointment or attempt to go talk to him, but good luck. All right, all right. Cool, we're Very going good. to the same place. Very good. All right, carry on. Oh, yeah, look at that. He just put a ring on his cock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that's when we got kicked off Amazon. <laughs> okay, yeah. so are we on Amazon? Amazon? Uh, what? We're on. We're um, on Audible. Audible. Yeah, we were, it's, sell it's, sex toys. It's, we're on Audible. No, you know what? Yeah. Audible, Audible has some pretty raunchy stuff. I think that that's actually pretty mild. So you're just gonna mark it. Oh, yeah. You're gonna cast <laughs> press digitation <laughs> on what? Uh, on his cock ring. Uh, as soon as you start casting, make the it spell, sparkle. Oh it starts God. to tighten, and you can feel a lot of pressure. Oh, no. This uh, sounds actually, like an ER. This sounds like an ER story now. Roll, roll me a strength check. Here we go. Please. Here we go. <laughs> I hope you've been a doing your thing. Dick strength check. Make sure you say it properly. Roll the strength uh, check for your twenty. Even so, your, your legs and knees buckle as it tightens. And you look like you're about to drop to your knees, but you hold it together. And everybody's looking at you. And as you go to cast a spell, it seems to, again, right before it starts, it just glitters out of your hands and dissipates into the air as your eyes begin to water a little bit. But you keep your composure as, as much as you can. Uh, oh, it's gone now? But it's tightening uh it works and, and as soon as the spell finished uh it stopped tightening but it stayed at that intensity so you're currently at disadvantage uh for running okay uh you tried out the the, the ring didn't you what no <clears throat> and, and how do we feel after that experiment not bad actually okay it it's good to know yeah it was super tight <laughs> so tight. <laughs> his uh, his look, voice you, has gone you, up an octave. You look so a little just, weak behind the eyes, is all I'm saying. Little little little, little tearing up there. Like, no, like I'm tearing. good. Let's go. Okay. All right. Now, all right. my question: Does he have it just around like the way it's supposed, or is it around the whole thing? You know what? Like, I didn't actually specify. I'm gonna leave that up to him. So, like, <laughs> I, obviously, the most painful, the most most painful places. That's where we're gonna end this all episode. Right. Oh. Okay. Thank yous for listening to Crumpets and Kerosene. Join Jason and the Argonauts as the party make their way through Carlton Brew. Download us on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, and anywhere else you download your favorite shows. You can also follow us on Twitter at DD underscore Crumpets, Instagram at Crumpets and Kerosene, Facebook, Crumpets and Kerosene Podcast, YouTube, Crumpets and Kerosene. We also have a website. CrumpetsandKerosene.com. DM is Kelly Williams. Twitter and Instagram at Infantry underscore Kitchen. Jason is played by Brent Marquis. You can find him on Twitter at Brent Lee Marquis. Merle is played by Seth Nason. You can find him on Twitter at Nason underscore Duh. Alora is played by Amanda Lee Baldwin. You can find her on Twitter at LemonSeed05. Sophie is played by Allison Webb. Quentin played by Jason Cassidy. You can find him on Instagram at Dungeoneering with Jason. Serenity, Serene, is played by Jenna Marie. You can find her on Instagram at chaotic underscore click underscore clack. Production of Crumpets and Kerosene is done in-house. Sound effects used in this episode are sourced from Epidemic Sounds and remastered on Vegas Pro 17, Adobe Edition, and Aphonic Sounds. Check out Maximum Roll. Join us each week as we interview folks within the gaming and entertainment industry, such as writers, illustrators, artists, podcasts, Twitch and YouTube streamers, social media content creators, handcrafted gaming apparel and merchandise, and much more. You can find Maximum Roll on Apple and Spotify and anywhere else you find your podcast. If you want to be interviewed on the show, just email us at MaximumRollEntertainment at gmail.com or Instagram at Maximum underscore Roll underscore Entertainment underscore LLC. 
And if you like Maximum Rule, check out some of the other Dungeons and Dragons podcasts and streams on the Maximum Rule Entertainment Podcast Network, such as, uh, you know what? I'm just going to let them tell you about their shows. Looking for a unique and fun twist to your normal D&D podcast? Well then check out Crumpets and Kerosene. This international podcast came together from the United States, Canada, Norway, and Germany. This fun, filled homebrew game takes our adventures from the modern world into a land of roving gangs of killer clowns, creepy British children, the mating habits of dragons, and even Santa Claus. Join Jason, Alora, Merle, Sophia, Quentin, and Serene as they quest their way through the realms of mystery and evil. You can find Crumpets and Kerosene on Apple, Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, and everywhere you find podcasts. You can also find us on Patreon. Search Crumpets and Kerosene and get even more wild and crazy fun. Hey, hey, stop on by DD420.com. We're a guild of role players brought and bound together by Common Drive, the love of role playing games. We bring our individual skills and personalities together to breathe life into the worlds and games created by our game masters. We also offer podcasts such as Late Night with Jess and Jam. We have custom content, a bestiary for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons and a Discord server where you can find games or just hang out and make new friends. That's dnd420.com. Need some excitement on that morning drive to work? Welcome, adventurers, to Constructed Chaos, a live play Dungeons & Dragons podcast full of unpredictable antics, borking doggos, and engaging fantasy storytelling and roleplay. With sessions recorded in a professional studio setting, you'll feel every bit of the action and hear every snide remark by the snarky NPCs. Jump in and have a listen to our flagship campaign, The Wrath of Zealous, to help us construct some chaos. We also have Adventurers Roundtable joining us on the network. If you have a podcast or a show that you want to join the network with, email us at MaximumRollEntertainment at gmail.com and we'll see what we can do. Take care. In a world of magic and mystery, where danger lurks around every corner, a new type of hero emerges. Brave. Resourceful. Potty trained. I, I, poo, I, I, I pooped in my pants. Well, maybe not potty trained. Coming soon only to the Crumpets and Kerosene Patreon, it's Babies and Broadswords. So, 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 someone please, my, my pants, I pooped in my pants. Action. Ali here, announcing our newest Patreon exclusive show, Call of Kafali. Join all the players from Crumpets and Kerosene as they play brand new characters in the eldritch world of Cthulhu. Set in England in the 1960s, these humble folk must delve into the dark corners of reality and face the most dreadful horrors in the great unknown. If you want to hear me spook our players and unravel the secrets of the universe, be sure to join our second tier Patreon level and tune in every month for Call of Cthulhu. Gee Willikers, critical fell again! Psst, come here! What, me? Yeah, get over here. I sees you throwing those mundane polys. Now, I can hook you up with some real nice dice. Oh, well, I I don't know, mister. Trust me. Now, I can't guarantee no nat 20s, but you're gonna look good rolling these bones. Next time you're on Instagram, Facebook, or Etsy, search Chaotic Click Clacks and peruse our exotic array of handmade gaming dice. That's Chaotic Click Clacks, where we want to be your clack dealer.